Okay, there we go. We're back. Had some technical issues right as the fun music stopped. So I guess not as good an intro as we had last week where we had a little music to start us off, but we got some cool stuff to talk about this week, right? Welcome to Wednesday Night Mythic Conversations, a very special episode because tonight we are talking about none other than the Legions Con day one figure set. If you tuned in to the afternoon show today, you know what we're going to talk about. Um, If you didn't get a chance to check that out, certainly watch the replay because it was a ton of fun because what we revealed was a special two-pack set that was made in honor of George Gaspar and Chris Gorich. Uh, We're going to look at that today. I'm going to answer. I've been getting my phone's been literally nonstop since that reveal today people asking me questions about these figures we're going to talk a lot about those today hopefully i'll answer some questions along the way as well so that's the big news that's going on in the world of legions before we dig into that uh quick if you checked out the afternoon show before the reveal Diego gave an update that the, the continue the, the in-stock sale shipping continues. We actually sent out an email to all, uh, all subscribers to the store yesterday, just letting them know that you know, our original hope was that all the shipping would be done by the end of March. Um, obviously, that has come and gone. Shipping is not done. Just the volume of orders, the size of orders. One of the things that's different about that kind of a shipping process. Normally, even a, uh, a wave like Poxis, that's a fairly large wave. It's what, like 10 figures? There were so many different figures in this in-stock sale. I think it was actually the largest variety of figures we've ever put up for sale like at one time like that. Um, so just the complexity of the orders and picking and packing all those different pieces definitely adds uh, to the timeline. Again, the support of the awesome Legionnaire fan base made that such a successful sale. So that continues. I think right now we're anticipating we probably have a few more weeks of shipping on that. Um, Last Friday, and I do see a lot of comments coming in, so I'm going to certainly try to get to some of those along the way. But last Friday, we also put tickets on sale for Legions Con 2024. We knew we were going to be doing the reveal today, so we wanted to get that out there, get those available. So if you go to legionscon.com, and let me let me go here and bring that up. If you go to legionscon.com, you can see that right now, if you click the tickets on sale now, or there's there's links throughout the whole website, but if you click that tickets on sale now, it's going to bring you over to uh, what's called Eventbrite. So Eventbrite is the platform we've used for the last few years to actually do tickets for the show. So what's going to happen, let me go back here. If you go to Eventbrite, you click that link, what you're going to see is you're going to see this get tickets. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I've had a lot of people ask me about the date and time because the date says Saturday, November 9th. That is the first day of Legion's Con. The badges online are two day badges. We actually don't pre-sell single day badges. All we sell is the two day badge, which is $40 for the entire weekend. Plus there's fees. I think it comes to like 40 $7 $7 or something like that with fees and taxes. Um, if you were only going to go one day, we will, well, at least we anticipate having um, day of bad uh, wristbands at the door. So if you want to go just Saturday or just Sunday, it's $30 for admission for one day. You can come up. We don't pre-sell 
single day wristbands. We only pre-sell the two day badges. Unfortunately, and this was like the last couple of years too. Um, when you enter stuff into Eventbrite and you have to pick the day of the event, you can't pick multiple days. You can't say, hey, this is from Friday or Saturday, Sunday. You, you can't. You have to just pick one day. So we pick the opening day of the show. So that's what we did here. If you are waiting to get the two-day badges, you don't need to wait. That is what is online right now. You can get those badges immediately. The two-day badge is what is actually available. Um, so on that note, that's available now. I had another thing I wanted to say about that. Um, oh, the other point. One thing you may have noticed as well is we did actually expand the hours. So last year, we had Legions Con day one. The Saturday ran from nine to four. The Sunday ran from nine to three. We had so many people ask us last year to actually make it longer. They wanted more time. A lot of people asked for Friday night VIP. There's zero chance I'm doing Friday night VIP. Friday night is already absolute chaos. Um, remember, we do G-Con all day on that Friday. So once G-Con's done, we as a studio need to set up as well. We need a bit of a breather. We've got a ton of work to do. All of the exhibitors have a ton of setup to do. Um, and if you are an exhibitor, Friday night's kind of cool because that's kind of like your night. Um, it took a it took exhibitors a long time to set up this past year because they were having so much fun just hanging out and talking and stuff. So Friday night is not going to be open to the general public. Um, looking at Saturday and Sunday, we wanted to figure out what makes the most sense. So we we're going to open up an hour earlier each day. So instead of at nine, we'll open up at eight. So all of you who are in line super early, you'll get in that much earlier. Um, and we're going to extend it an hour each night. Now, if for people that are exhibitors, you probably know that on the Saturday after the doors closed, we had exhibitor only hours. So exhibitors could shop the full horseman table. We're going to do something similar this year. Um, additionally, one of the things I'm excited for that I'm working on this year that we'll talk more about as we get closer is having activities and things that are going on after hours as well. So one of the really cool things we had at Legions Con this past year was Chris James did a parts swap, like uh, not, not just popping and swapping, but like he brought a whole bunch of loose parts uh, and pieces, fodder pieces, and he encouraged other people, bring your extra fodder and we'll trade stuff off. And there was just a bunch of people trading fodder pieces. It ended up being something that was really well received. We're going to do that again this year, but in a more formal way. What we're going to do is we're going to have a number of different things like that that we actually schedule and put on the schedule. Things that almost exist outside of the Legions Con programming. We're kind of bringing that in to the Legions Con programming and allowing people like Chris and others to do some fun things that we know the Legions Con attendees will enjoy. Because that's one of the things that's cool about this show. If you've never been, even though the show runs say from eight to five, when the doors close at five, it does the show, the event does not end because so many people are staying in the hotel or even if you're not in the hotel, the hotel is now sold out on the, at least the Saturday night. Um, there are two overflow hotels that are less than two miles away. They're right down the street. There are a lot of people that literally hung out at the venue hotel until very late at night until they got in their car and drove the two miles back to their hotel, basically to take a shower and sleep before they did it all again the next day. So we want the entire environment, like the lobby is rocking. There's definitely people having a good time. Um, it's a big party. Even if you're not going to drink or anything like that, you're certainly not required to have fun at this show. There's a lot of people that aren't drinking that are just hanging out and enjoying the atmosphere. There will be a ton of stuff to see. There will be a ton of stuff to do. So if you haven't picked up your Legions Con 2024 tickets yet, um, amazing first weekend rush. Again, we put them on sale last Friday. We're already, as of tonight, about 30% sold out. So I don't anticipate that we're going to sell out in the next week or so. Although, hell, who knows? With a reveal like what we did today, we may see a huge spike in ticket sales. Um, but 
as we get closer and closer, we're definitely uh, looking like this could be another year where we sell out. Last year, we didn't sell out. Last year, we increased capacity. The year before, 2022, we actually did sell out. That was in a different location. That was a much smaller location. Um, but we do limit the amount of sales simply because we don't want too many people. You know, one thing that's interesting about a toy show is if you've ever been to a toy show, it's it's transit, right? Like people people come in, they walk the show a few times, they leave. So as people come in and leave, other people come in, you're basically exchanging people. There's going to be a peak period, but there's always people coming and going. Um, Legions Con, anyone that's been knows that it is not like that. Nobody leaves. Like so many people, I would say probably 90% of the people, they show up at the event and they stay the entire time. There were people that last year, they they did not leave the actual hotel from like Friday all the way through like Monday morning when they checked out. So we want to make sure that we don't oversell the event. So the lines are unmanageable. The crowd is unmanageable. We want people to have a good time, which is why we set a limit on the ticket sales, even if we could sell more. That's not our goal here. Our goal is not to sell the most amount of tickets possible. Our goal is to hopefully sell out of tickets, but to do so in a way that we know that everyone's going to have a good time because we've managed that crowd size. So let's see what's going on here. Ooh, awesome. Okay. So I'm going to check the comments, see what's going on here. Happy music. Uh, Jeremy saying this pier has the best exclusive bits of all the con figures. Okay. Thank you. We'll talk about those in a bit. Uh, Hopefully there's not more audio delay. Someone mentioned audio delay. Hopefully that's all fixed now. And it was just right at the beginning. Yes, George's reaction was priceless today. He's been texting me. George and Chris have been texting me tonight as well. That is <laughs> very, very fun. Uh, what faction are these going to be a part of? So, Drew, we actually did add them to the Convocation of Basilia. Uh, it's interesting because... With these two characters, one being like a monk and one being a blade master that has mastered this like mystical art of disguise and illusion, um, having them in the group of spellcasters and magic users seemed to make sense. Uh, the only other one that really was considered was probably House of the Noble Bear, but I kind of felt like so much gets dumped in the House of the Noble Bear because like Sons of the Red Star, it is a catch-all faction anybody can reasonably be in it i didn't want to dump these two in the house of the noble bear like their actual story didn't feel like it worked as well there i really like convocation of basilia and eric agreed with that so that's where they got to go let's see uh checking out all the comments here just trying to get caught up before we start looking at the figures do, do, do. Oh, yeah, Brandon's saying one day is not enough for Legion's Con. Some people don't have a choice. I mean, if you have a choice, going for two days is preferred. But there are, of course, many people that may have to work one of those two days. They're, you know, they're somewhat local, so they can, they're not flying in or something. They can reasonably go for one day. I mean, of course, if that's what happens, you know, I, I, I'd rather you go for one day than no days. Right there, we go. Uh, let's see what's going on. Just trying to go through all the comments as quickly as possible. Awesome, Tiffany. Nice to see that you and your family are going to be back again this year. That's very cool. Comments here. Yes, Matt, there is a chance that we will sell out. Uh, let's see. Is the robe a red death robe, Kevin? Uh, we're going to talk about that, but no, it's actually the robe from uh, uh, Altar Silovius from the Cosmic Legions uh, line from the upcoming Outpost Zaxius wave. That is where those robes are the exact same soft good cut that we have on those awesome okay so let's take a look at this so again if you checked out the afternoon show today you got to see the what we actually revealed i'm going to bring that up right now 
And we're going to talk about this because I've had a lot of questions, a lot of people asking me, for instance, about like the monk and what those parts are, what those legs are. So we're going to go through that. So this is the two, this is the two pack that we're going to get. And, you know, it's interesting because the whole idea of doing these tribute figures, you know, I, I saw a lot of speculation, people saying it's going to be Trevor, it's going to be, you know, Tre Tre Trevor and Nate Strong Tupac, it's going to be Door Claire, it's going to be Cookie, it's going to be, you know, name it, go down the list. Um, and it's interesting because there are so many people that, based on their contribution to this community, are certainly worthy of tribute figures. Uh one of the things, the way that I've always approached tribute figures, I'll be, to be frank, the only tribute figure I ever knew I was trying to create a tribute figure before I created it was Walter. Walter last year, we had talked for a while that we wanted to do a figure uh, to, to recognize and honor Walter. So that was the only one that started with, okay, if we were going to do a tribute to Walter, what would we do? That's how that started. Everything else, the Furious Four, this set here, the figures came first. I've told this story before that when I was driving home from the 2021 Legions Con and I was thinking about what would be a cool set for the following year, I got this idea of a popping and swapping set, a set that was really, you know, geared towards mixing and matching all the parts. And then I was like, ooh, how cool would it be if that was a Fury Clan set and all the parts matched the Fury Clan you know, orc figure that already exists and each other. And because Cornvoy had said that the Fury clan extends beyond orcs, you know, we could have other races and we could do a cat head. And, you know, all of that was on the ride home. And then as I was driving, thinking about this, the idea of, oh, wow, two different, it's a two pack. So it's two figures, two extra head, you know, an extra head for each four characters. The idea of that being the Furious Four and then the figures started writing themselves. The bios started writing themselves, who the car, what the heads were going to use, who was going to be who. That all happened. But the figure idea came first. Same thing with this. I have wanted a monk in the Mythic Legions wave for or Mythic Legions line for a really long time. So much so, I'll show you this. This is actually a figure, a custom figure that I did a really, really long time ago. Like this is a very, very early custom, obviously long before I was working with the studio. I had put this together because I actually wanted a monk figure. And this uses, you know, a number of Legion's parts for the torso and the arms and everything. Um, This was long before we had bare feet. So there was a custom bare feet that I had that were were cast actually, I think, from a Masters of the Universe figure. Um, he's got armored lower legs because that's all we had at this time. The the skirt that he has there and the wrist wraps were from a Marvel Select Doctor Strange that I modified. Like there's so much about this that I you know cobbled together to create this kind of you know slightly you know unarmored monk look. Again, he had to have armored legs because that's all we had at the time. I've always wanted to do something like that officially in the line. So last year, the idea for these figures, I actually started thinking about this before last Legions Con. It was literally like last summer that I went to Eric and started talking to him about this idea and getting his feedback on it and stuff. It was so long. It was so long ago that he laughed when I actually said to him, hey, can we talk about next year's Legions Con figures? Because that year's Legions Con figures weren't even in hand yet, much less having passed. Um, but I remember looking at the parts that we had and, you know, this was the point that Eric was working on the, uh, the rising suns wave. So he was redoing a lot of the barbarian builds. He was doing a lot of those bare parts and stuff. And there were pieces that, you know, he had done that I was able to, to utilize that, you know, some stuff that had gotten done. So looking at this, looking at the, the the different wraps and stuff, you know, those wrist wraps on Varg are something that people have asked about for a while, saying like, oh, I'd love to get more of those rip wrist wraps. Um, I wanted to also do them on the lower legs. I just showed you that monk custom where I had to use armored lower legs. Now that we had these bare lower legs, I wanted to utilize those. That's one of the questions a lot of people have asked me. What are those lower legs? Are those brute lower legs? Are they 1.0 lower legs? Um, the answer is they're neither, actually. They're brand new. So the wraps, the wraps that we have there that you see, 
those are the brute lower leg wraps. So if you have Tharnog or if you have, uh, actually, yeah, it's not on cows there. If you have Tharnog, those are the wraps that come on Tharnog. But the lower leg itself is a different lower leg. And I'll show you an example of it. So this photo here, this was a photo. This is a little behind the scenes shot. This is a photo that George sent me during the like back and forth design process for this figure. I will also point out that he sent this picture to me of his namesake figure at a point that he had no idea this was his namesake figure. This entire process was very, very surreal as I'm dealing with Chris and George about the production of this set neither of them knowing the set is based on them is named after them it was very funny um but what you can see here is the leg the lower leg on the left that is the one that we decided to use that's a new size the lower leg on the right is basically it is also a new lower leg but it's the 1.0 so that lower leg it's not as big as a brute lower leg brute is a little bit bigger this is a little bit thicker, a little bit chunkier, but not as thin as that, that lower 1.0 leg. So these are some brand new parts that you are getting here. Yes, Jacob, those are removable lower leg wraps. You could pull them off and just have bare lower legs underneath them. And because those bare feet don't have anything around the rim, it's not like a lot of our other feet that have, you know, that little armored lip around the rim. This has no lip, so if you did pull those wraps off, it would just be bare lower legs. Hopefully that kind of answers that question for you. Because I got a number of people that reached out and they said, hey, settle an argument for me. Are those 1.0 lower legs or are they brute lower legs? And I said, well, they're technically 1.0, but they're brand new. They are a new style lower leg you haven't seen previously. Same thing with the rest of the body. I heard some people point out that while that body looks a little bit different than what we've got and it's a little more textured it is a little more textured these are some newer parts that eric had worked on for the uh as part of the rising suns wave so we get some of that here i'm gonna check out some of the comments because i see them coming in fast and furious so let's see going back wow man i gotta go back a while here Ooh, oh okay let's see uh, see if there's any comments. Uh, every time I look at Gorich, Kirby says, I see some other detail that's special. Yeah, we're going to get to Gorich in a bit. We're going to talk about Gaspar first. That's the first one we revealed. Mm, oh, here's a new fan. Road Shark says, just found out about Mythic Legions at Muskegon. Uh, we're going to go to Legions Con. We're rookies. Do you, you're going to have so much fun. Being at Legions Con, it's it's like another world. It is so positive, so fun, so much creativity. If you enjoyed that little taste of Legions you got at Mesquite Con, you were going to be over the moon at Legions Con. Awesome. Mm, let's see. Do, do, do. Let's see. Let number of people reiterating what I just said, saying your mind's going to be blown. Uh, yeah, it's funny. He said, Guardo says, uh, Jeremy, I've also wanted a monk. I just finished my custom Shaolin monk. I, you might have been the one that I saw. If it's it's a really cool one, it uses actually the Samir head. Yeah, I saw those and I, I've actually seen a few people doing monks. I didn't, I, so I did, I used the Samir head to make kind of like an Indian, uh, like wise man type character recently and i've avoided actually doing any monk things because i knew this was coming out and i didn't want to shoot that shot before this was fully revealed mm. okay let's see what's going on here <laughs> so we've got chris in the we've got chris in the chat where he says can confirm george's leg look like this which is why he never wears shorts yes Gaspar definitely did not skip leg day. He is a he's thick down in those legs, but he's a he's a half orc, so it it that tracks, right? Uh, this is going to be a so this 2022 Legions Con. 
I, Chris, I'm confused by what you said, but it sounds like you're saying this is going to be an expensive Legion's Con. I would reiterate that. Start saving now. It is going to be expensive. By the way, the price on this set, we haven't announced it yet. Um, we need to wait until we get prices from the factory to figure out exactly what we need to charge for this. But it's going to be similar to what we've done for the last couple of years. The last few years, two packs have been $100 at the show. It'll be similar to that. Do -do -do. Okay, so this is the two figures here. Let's talk a little bit about these individual figures, and we've already started that. Obviously, the figures are called The Legend of Gaspar the Unamused and Gorge the Unpredictable. This was a fun nod to Chris and George, um, the name Gaspar. George always jokes about the fact that our figures all have double consonants in their names. So there's a lot of inside jokes like this in this set, and that's one of the things I actually love about Legions. Like, these... These can be whatever in your head canon. These are serious looking figures, right? They're not, they don't look silly by looking at them. But I love the fact that we have the room in this line to have fun like this. Because look, there is a real story we are telling. There's a, you know, a complex history and dichotomy and relationships for all these characters. But at the end of the day, these are toys. These are supposed to be fun. These are supposed to bring joy if you watch the afternoon show today, you know that this was a joyous occasion to reveal these and to reveal this uh, bio here. So the bio, I think, really adds a lot to these characters. Let's do a little bit of story time with Jeremy. Let's read these. They are an unlikely pair. A dour monk who dislikes amusements and a blade master who can barely stop joking long enough to draw his weapons mismatched but perfectly suited to each other they are a powerful duo as they travel the realm fighting evil and seeking adventure so that's kind of the intro now we've got the individual bios and if you go to the website both of these characters are on the website are on uh, source horseman now these are the bios that are on the website that little intro to the story and the outro part i'll read in a few minutes those are not currently on the website because they're part of the, the story itself. All of this will be on the packaging. A half-orc from a small valley on the eastern coast of Xylernia, Gaspar has dedicated his life to finding peace and achieving enlightenment. He has worked tirelessly to harden his mind and his body, yet two weaknesses have kept him from achieving the enlightenment he seeks. The first of these weaknesses is his affinity for small, useless playthings that he finds and collects. The second is his unexplainable attachment to the exuberant blade master who travels by his side. Gorich, the unpredictable, is not only an expert with the blades he carries, but also with a mystical practice of disguise and illusion known as the D-13. The disguises which this half-walk warrior has mastered are often used to amuse others. These elaborate costumes also allow the Blade Master to pass unnoticed so he may carry out his capers. Gorch is a consummate trickster, yet those who underestimate him do so at their own peril, for he knows when it is time to put the jokes aside and when he must get down to business. Two warriors who have become more than companions, they have become brothers. This is the legend of Gaspar the Unamused and Gorich the Unpredictable. So if you know these characters, if you know their stories, there's tons of little inside jokes in there. Very similar to the bios that I wrote for the Furious Four. Those as well had a ton of inside jokes. It's funny. I remember when we dropped the Furious Four, there were people complaining that the bios were stupid and they didn't understand the jokes. Like they were just, and I remember people in the chats like being like, dude, you don't, you don't get what these are based on. Like the things you're saying are stupid are literally jokes about the characters these are based on. These are very, very similar. There's a lot. I mean, the fact that we referred to Gaspar as an orc that dislikes amusements, that's a play on the whole George hates fun. You know, Gaspar dislikes amusements is the new George hates fun. So very, very cool. Um, lots of fun things there. And I, I was thrilled to be able to present those and surprise them today as well. <laughs> Just going through the comments here. Uh, let's see. These guys are so fun, Jesse says. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so 
this figure, this is the one that really did come together like right away. We, we talked on the afternoon show that the the Garch, the unpredictable, was a bit of a challenge to, to get done. But this one here came together pretty much right away. You know, really the biggest challenge for this one was the belt area. Because originally I had posted that we were going to use the belt from uh, Red Death. So I figured, okay, we'll do that wrap. Like he's got, you can see that lower wrap and I'll show here that, that loin piece, that's from Red Death. So originally the Red Death waist piece, what was going to be on this as well. And as Joe Vasopolo started putting this stuff together, that piece was too small. He was like, dude, this is not going to look right. Um, this is a fit character in Red Death is so small and skinny. It just, it doesn't fit. So I had talked about using the belt pieces from the tuperculi, but at the end of the day, we were worried. We should have those parts available in time, but there's always that, that worry that if there's some delay or something and you don't have it, when we do the legions con figures, we want to use parts that are already tooled. That's one of the things. And I saw a number of comments today, speculation and stuff where people were, you know, hoping that these were going to be brand new figures. I heard some people asking if they're going to be figure obscures and stuff. Um, that's one of the things with not only Legion's Con, but really any of these show figures is one of the rules as we design them is existing parts, existing parts that we have tooled and we know are ready to go because these have to be delivered by a certain time. We don't want to be waiting for tooling or waiting for anything in order to get these done. So even using that to percolate waste, we were worried about it. So Joe's the one that actually pulled out, and I think you can see it best here on this look here. It, this uses the waste that originally came with Tibius, but with belts over it. And I wanted the monk build to be totally unarmored. So at first I was bummed that we had to put armor on it, but it ended up working out great because that waist part is so minimal. It doesn't have the big full, you know, armored pieces on the sides of the legs. It's really just armor at the waist. And then those two straps, those two straps with the belt over it painted in this leather type fashion and ended up working so well that I love the way that it came out. I actually like it better than how it would have looked had we used the red death wraps, which was the first thought process. So yet another example of the team's expertise at play here, where an initial idea gets presented and every step of the way, members of the team are adding their pieces to it, doing their parts of the job to make it even better. I mean, I mentioned Joe doing that countless times on this show. So here is kind of a, you know, action pose of the 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 gas part, the unamused. So he's got that though that new body that we talked about, those new lower legs. He's got those wraps that I know a lot of people wanted. He's got the monkey king beads. So as soon as those beads were available, that that bead, those beads almost made me say like, "Oh, I think we can do a monk build" because they were almost like that one part that I knew we could start building off of. Um, that staff is actually from Cosmic Legions from Oleg Thigar. So I love the fact that, that that staff has like a different type of feel to it. It's got that monkish type feel. You know, even that at first I was imagining using one of the new staffs from the uh, the Poxus wave, like the staff that Thrace comes with. It's got that crystal ball on top. Well, if we painted that ball like metal, it wouldn't read as like a gem at top. It would just read like a ball of metal. That was my original thought. But then as I was digging around and I saw this, this staff, I'm like, wow, that is a perfect monk staff. And because it's from Cosmic, bringing that in in a way that it works in Mythic, I think just adds to the overall breakdown here. Checking out the comments, see if there's anything I have to answer. Mm -mm. Yes, you do need to source tiny bandanas for these guys. Absolutely. V-Dog saying, I'm a rookie as well. The Source Horseman in stock sale was the first time ordering these types of figures. Well, V-Dog, I don't know if your order has shipped yet. Hopefully it has and you have them and you're enjoying them. If not, it will be on their way soon. But welcome to the line. Welcome to Mythic Conversations. We are thrilled to have you here. 
Uh, is any of the articulation in the new style? Yeah, these are newer parts. So these will have a little bit more range of motion than probably what you would have seen on like the original Barbarian parts. These are going to be similar to what um, Eric was working on for the Rising Suns wave. Again, some of this was done at very early stages of the Rising Sun sculpting sessions. Uh, let's see. Going through the comments... When is Retro Rags putting out a Gaspar Dislikes Amusement shirt? Working on that now. <laughs> okay, let's see. Gaspar hates fun and armor. Yes, Gaspar is going to bear those legs. Okay, cool. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at here, I mean, obviously this fun photo, I forgot this was here actually. Um, this was another funny thing. If you heard me talk about this this afternoon. So, Part of me trying to keep the surprise reveal from George and Chris until today was as we were building out the breakdown for these figures, I knew I wanted to put this little toy in there because part of Gaspar's bio is that he likes useless playthings. But I didn't want to put it with the monk. So instead, I put it with the Blade Master, and George was like, that is so weird. And I said, well, the Blade Master used to be like a jester. That was his original job. And which makes sense, right? Chris is very jester-like. I said, you know, this is reminds him of his past life. And it's something I came up with like on the fly. And George was just like, okay, that's absolutely weird, but whatever. Um, because I knew all along, I mean, we actually sent it to Trevor and I had to say to Trevor, dude, that that little doll that's in with the blade master it actually goes in with the monk so much so that Trevor forgot at one point And he sent me a photo of the blade master holding the little doll. And I was like, dude, that's an awesome photo, but it's supposed to be with the monk. Remember? And he was like, Oh yeah, I totally forgot. So he took this photo instead, which I think is hysterical. Um, so this is the alternate look. This is in addition to that half orc monk, you know, I wanted to, you know, ensure that, people could build other characters out of this, including probably a more traditional looking warrior monk type character. So using a human head in this as well, in addition to the half orc, definitely made a lot of sense. And the Zende head was a perfect one to use right here. Uh, so Kurt is saying, speaking of articulation, do you think you will be able to do cool, to, cool two-handed nunchuck poses? Well, Curtis, to answer that question, he's doing kind of a cool nunchuck pose here. If you're talking about one of like these type poses, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but probably. Uh, yeah, so this is the head here. Now, I will say that just like we did last, a couple years ago with the Furious 4 set, that Furious 4 set had the extra cat head in it. And there wasn't an official name for that, but I gave it a name, which makes it somewhat official. Um, I called that head Cody Cat, which because if you know that my wife is going to kill me, producer Cody is kind of the fifth member of the crew. So having that head be called Cody Cat made sense. So with this one, this particular character here, this is an alternate character. It's not part of the bio, but I will tell you that in my head canon, I have given this character a name. I call this character Brother Xavier. So if you know Michael Xavier, a member of the Mythic Enablers podcast, um, as soon as the Zende figure was revealed at the Poxus wave, everybody blew up Michael's spot and they were like, dude, it's a tribute figure for you. This looks exactly like you. Um, and not naming that character like Zende Xavier or something like that was certainly a missed opportunity. I didn't want that to slide back here again. So at least in my head canon, which this character is not going to have an official name in the bio. So this will be about as official a name as he's going to get. I am going to call this character Brother Xavier, or we could take it a step further. Since we have Gaspar the Unamused and Gorich the Unpredictable, let's consider this guy uh, Brother Xavier the Enabler. There we go. That's what I am going to call this character. So fun aside, this is a very really cool look as well. I like this with just a head swap. And then we get to the bonus parts. So 
obviously the dwarf fans who seemingly like nothing but dwarves, they seem to be happy with this, but this was another fun thing. And this is also something else that I had wanted to do for a while. So that original dwarf custom, uh, monk custom that I showed you, this is another monk custom I did quite some time ago. This uses that Bromden and iron jaw head. Once again, large of armor on this body because I was working with what we had available at the time. But I have a group of monk customs that are from uh, a little group that I call, uh, <laughs> I call it the Order of the Stone Lotus. I'm sorry, I got distracted because I saw, I saw uh, Eric say, Jeremy, Mike is literally going to pass out. And Noah's here as well. So we've got we've got member of the members of the enablers in the chat right now, and they are they are blowing it up, liking that. So I did hear your episode where you were wondering if we were going to do an and I know you were kidding, guys, but you said, are we going to do an enablers uh Legions Con tribute set? And you jokingly said, Yeah, but they're not gonna put five heads in a legions con set um this set has seven heads in it it's ridiculous like between us i just kept putting more heads in and saying how about this head how about this head waiting for them to tell me to stop i didn't try to go with eight heads because i don't know maybe they would have let that many more go in there um but yeah really cool really cool um this is another example of a cool addition that joe vasapolo had a hand in so I knew I wanted to do a dwarf type monk character for this. I thought that would be a lot of fun. And Legion's Con is a great way to get some of these harder to find heads back onto a figure in a really like small way. Um, we did that all the way back with the Sir Gerard figure where we included the scapular head. Um, and I remember at the time I told this story that Eric wanted to avoid using that head because it's a main character but because the Sir Gerard character lore wise is a changeling and was meaning to look like scapular it actually made sense story wise for it to include it but because of the reaction to that head you know we all kind of saw that you know what this is a cool way to get some of these harder to find heads out there in a way where we don't have to make them a named character so they look like we don't want this guy to look exactly like Bromden because Bromden is an important named character. But doing it as these exclusive pieces is a really fun way to do that. So the Bromden head is one of the coolest dwarf head sculptures in the line. The fact that it's never been re-released is a bit of a crime. We got it in here. We've got those lower legs. Now, originally, this was supposed to only have uh, bare feet. Like it was going to be the lower legs from basically, originally it was going to be the lower legs from the hips to the ankles. And you were going to have to use the feet from the monk set and the waist part, the pelvis part. But in true Four Horsemen Studios fashion, adding a more value to these figures, this is a whole set of lower legs. It's the pelvis, it's all the lower legs. And Joe had actually suggested as he was pulling these parts, he was like, hey, what about we use these these leather shoes here? Um, and these are new leather boots. So these are not the same feet that were part that are on like say Valak um, and like Dubon and stuff. These are different feet that were sculpted as part of a previous sculpting session that we just haven't put in the line yet. They already exist. They're already out there and tooled, but we haven't used them yet. They're different from what is in the new Dwarf 2-pack. The new Dwarf 2-pack have more like armored parts on them. These are new feet there, so you get that as well. It's not new, like newly sculpted for this figure. They just haven't been used out of the library yet, so this is the first time you're getting to see them. Going through the comments. So yeah, so this this head and the, these feet will be, uh, legs, excuse me, will be uh, exclusive to the Legion's Con version. Mm, yeah, Eric saying, so pumped to have that Bromden head. Yeah, like I said, I that's one of the cool things about having, you know, people that work on the line that genuinely love the toys and love to play with the toys and love to customize the toys. Joe does that all the time where he's constantly like, Hey, can we add one of these in? Can we add this in? He's always looking at it from the perspective of, 
you know, the fan base and parts that would make sense in the toy, but also have value for the community as a whole. Okay, so that's what you're going to get with the monk with Gorge the unpredictable, uh, Gorge the, excuse me, Gaspar the unamused, Gorge the unpredictable, the Blade Master. That's the one we get here. And this one, while Gaspar came together really, really easily, this one was definitely more of a challenge. There were some different colors that we tried out on this figure to really land where we wanted some brighter color greens and stuff. You know, one of the things we wanted to do with this initially was we wanted to use colors that really haven't been used a lot on these parts. So for instance, those upper arms and upper legs, those use those fabric pieces, which are super, super cool. We've used them a number of times, but we've never used them in these colors. You know, planning out this figure, it would have been easy to do blacks and reds because black and red looks good with everything. It would have been easy to use black for the upper arms and legs as well. But we've used black for those parts a number of times that one of the things we wanted to do, and this is certainly a challenge as you plan these figures out, is how do we add new looks and new colors to these parts, but still create a cohesive looking figure that is not just us saying like, well, we just want to give you different color parts. We don't, this is not a parts line. We know for a lot of people, you love the parts, but we want you to love these figures too. I mean, look, at the end of the day, if you buy the figures, do what you want with them. Um, but we want you to love both. I mean, I know that I love both. I love the characters as is. There's a reason why my collection has all of the figures and their original looks, as well as a number of custom that use those parts. We want to try. That's always what we're striving for. Great looking figures, really cool characters and an assortment of parts that you can buy extras of so you can do your own creations with as well. So what you're seeing here, this uses a mixture, obviously that, that torso and waist piece. Those are the ones that were first introduced on Krodos. Those always had, I mean, this isn't a samurai. This is, you know, not meant to necessarily be a samurai. That's why we don't use the word samurai. This has definitely got, you know, some of that. It almost actually layout wise armor wise has a very similar look to like the terracotta warriors where they have a very similar a lot of them uh you know armor build shoulders and stuff so that was kind of the inspiration on this a blade master as opposed to like a samurai because we don't have like true samurai parts um so we've got that monkey king shoulder armor there painted in a very new color you know i know some people had mentioned that the ones for the retailer figure in the original one, they're very, very similar. And we already talked on a previous show about why that is. Brand new colors, these greens and these silvers with gold accents here. That head is the one that's only been used so far on the, uh, the Shadow Orc grunt. So we get to see that again, but this time with those antlers. That lower skirt piece, which is pretty versatile, that's fully wired. That lower skirt piece is actually the same as the one that's going to come with Gaspar, but it's also the same one that comes with Altar. And as you'll see in a few minutes, there's a variety of ways you can use that. You can remove it. You can use it as a cape. You've got some options there as well. So back view there where you can see that green armor, you know, from the front, you get a lot of the silver because of the, the armor plating, but in the back, you can see that almost like jade color. That's kind of what we were going for. I know a number of people and their speculations today were um, hoping to see the Jade Knight, something that's been kind of, you know, a part of the Legion's universe since that first Kickstarter fantastic exclusive process. Um, this isn't that, but it definitely has that Jade type color there. Action shot. Um, you know, that cool, that weapon. So that weapon that he's holding, that spear-like bladed spear, what that is, is that's the handle that originally came on like the trident with the elf like sword upper part plugged in there. So it kind of creates this really cool, really long spear that he uses along with those two blades there. Now, the lore of this character that I read, this character is a master of disguise. And that was, of course, a fun nod to Chris and his uh, affinity for dressing up in costumes on the afternoon show. We also made him the master of this mystical art called the D13 or Disguises 13. 
I imagine this as he has 13 disguises that he has mastered. He's not a changeling. He's not like Sir Gerard. This is genuinely him. He is a half-orc, but he can take these disguises on. Um, if you know Chris, D13 is the name of his toy company that, that put, is putting out the Biblical Adventures line, which, by the way, mentioned that as well. Chris put up a bunch of really cool exclusive figures, his chocolate Easter angels and his various demons from ZoloCon and LegionsCon. All of those are at D13 Toys. He put them up this past weekend. If you didn't grab those, great opportunity to do so. A little plug for Chris there. Um, <laughs> Michael Xavier is in the chat, says, I was getting ready for work and my phone started blowing up. Yes. Brother Xavier, the enabler. So... Congratulations, my friend. Could give you a little 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 nod there. <laughs> yes, straight poop. You're like Zartan. You are like Zartan. You're like a silly Zartan. You're like a mix of like Zartan and Pee Wee Herman. That's where I'm gonna say you are. Two pretty cool characters right there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you actually, I'm looking at comments. You mentioned the Jade Knight as well. Uh, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Michael Xavier, dude, I'm in tears. Brother Xavier, I love this. There you go. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay, so checking out the comments here. So the first of his disguises here, I mean, dude, no secret. I love the animal characters. I love the critters. Uh, anthropomorphic characters are what brought me to Four Horsemen Studios in the first place through the Seventh Kingdom waves. Um, so anytime that we can, you know, reasonably work in animal parts, I'm, I'm all there for that. So this, this Jaguarian head and tail, this is one of the, you know, kind of looks that we get here as well. Um, we wanted to do something with face paint on this. Um, and it's interesting because we didn't want to go, I mean, at first I was thinking like Kabuki style, but Kabuki is Japanese. Didn't want this to be Japanese. So Chris had actually suggested, and again, remember, Chris is suggesting this stuff, not knowing he's suggesting it for his namesake figure. Um, but Chris had suggested like Peking opera masks. So we looked at some different Peking opera masks and everything. And while this isn't exactly like them, it's certainly inspired by some of those designs that we saw to really just create a cool look on this figure. Um, and it looks like it's kind of, because he's got fur, it looks like it's kind of brushed on towards the edges. Um, once we get like closer up photos of that, you'll see that it looks really cool. But this is another example where you can see without that lower skirt on, it really has a different look to the build there as well. Um, another head, and I saw a bunch of people talking about this looking like Boba Fett, which, I mean, that head, this head has been around forever. The colors are not, but I mean, the, the colors are more Johto cast. If you know, like expanded universe, um, the, the kind of copycat who was cashing in on Boba Fett's infamy and his reputation and taking bounties uh, because of that was called Johto cast. And he had green and orange armor. That's not what this was based on. I I love that head. And just I said on the earlier show today, it's actually been included in every year's Legions Con figures. So it was fun to get it in there again. Um, the paint scheme. So Cameron painted this figure. That paint scheme was something Cameron came up with to go along like with the rest of the colors in the figure and the colors on the monk. Because that's one of the things... We mentioned the challenges with this paint job. Um, you know, originally it was almost like the paint colors that, you know, were suggested were kind of done in a vacuum. And then when this figure was side by side with the monk, you know, George at one point had said they don't actually look like they know each other. They, they, they weren't close enough. So getting this one to match some of the colors seen on the, the monk ended up being the right call and ended up really bring this figure to life. So this is yet another head that we have that's available here as well. And then of course, the exclusive part of this set, we have the dwarf head and the dwarf legs that are part of the monk. Only available in the two pack set is going to be this head. And again, another cool look, that skirt used as a cape. I remember 
when Trevor was taking this, he said, Hey, do you mind if I use that skirt as a cape to show it? And I was like, dude, if it looks cool, totally go for it. Showing the different variety, the different things you can do with this set. I'm absolutely all for that. Um, I loved using this head. I kind of wanted this head included once again, because it's a harder to find head, you know, the new Atlas head from Atlas two that is coming out. That's not hard to get, obviously. I mean, it's not available yet, but it's for pre-order. That's going to be anyone that buys that figure is going to have that head. That figure comes with two heads, the gladiator head as well. So if you get an extra to use that gladiator head, you'll end up with an extra one of the Atlas heads. Um, but I've always loved this sculpture. Um, I actually have a version of this head painted very similar to this that I had used on my tribute that I had at Legion's Con last year for Baba Voss from the uh, Apple TV show C, which, by the way, if you've never seen the Apple TV show C with Jason Momoa, I highly recommend it. One of my favorite shows of all time. Um, but I had used that head for that figure. So I really liked the way that head looked on a swordsman type character. Jason Momoa has a very samurai like feel in that show. Um, so including that here, having it be the exclusive piece, I think that really worked well also. So this is the full build out. I'm going to leave it on this screen as I go through some comments. And then we're going to talk more about this. Uh, let's see. Both of these figures are just fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Cloud. Uh, is Garish's bearded head supposed to look like a mythic Jesus? No, that's not intentional. I guess that's just a happy bonus accident. Um, so this is the full build out and I love having Trevor do these shots. You know, he did this for the, uh, Walter set last year as well. Cause I really think that when you see this build out, this loadout set, it lets you know exactly what you're going to get as part of this set. I did mention, we still don't know the price on this cause we're still waiting to figure out what our costs are going to be, but it's going to be similar to what we had. The last two two packs were $100 a piece. It's going to be very similar to that. Um, this is the full build out. So you can see those full set of dwarf legs. This is actually a great shot because it shows what I was talking about from that pelvis to those feet, that full set of dwarf legs you get. It's got that Bromden head. It's got that Atlas head. Those are the exclusive parts to the two pack. It will come together. It will have character-specific story and all that stuff on this package. It will be branded Legion's Con. So outside of this just being a cool couple figures, a cool assembly of parts, it's also going to be a cool presentation. Um, I know there are a lot of people that collect these in box as well. Um, my good friend Tomas from over in Sweden, uh, you know, he had just posted recently that I was fortunate enough to send him over a signed Sir Gerard to add to his collection because he's got the signed uh, Furious Four from two years ago. He's got the signed Walter from last year. I have no doubt that when uh, Tomas comes to Legions Con this year, he's going to get this signed by Chris and George to add to his collection. So, this shows the full assembly beyond what we've shown today. One of the things that I love about this set as well that I think is going to add to the mixing and matching is because these parts work really well together, you could put that, the half orc head that's on the monk, that's the Vorthog head, right? You could put that Vorthog head or that Zende head, or heck, if you wanted to, even that Bromden head on the sword master, the blade master, and it would totally work. You could use those dwarf legs. We showed them on the monk. If you use that, those dwarf legs on the blade master, along with that Bromden head, you could make a little, you know, kind of almost like a little dwarf samurai blade master type character. Again, I hate using samurai because it's not Japanese armor, but you get what I'm saying. You know, that, that, dwarf looking you know fantasy blade master type character that that would work as well um the only head that i think's not really a, the atlas head is a different skin tone 
than what's on either of the other two. It works fine on the Blade Master because there's no other exposed skin, but it doesn't, it's not going to work, I don't think, as well on the Monk because even though there's some separation with the beard and the hair, so you don't see skin on skin, it's still close enough and different enough that I don't think that's going to actually work. Um, the others, I mean, you could certainly put the others on it. Probably not going to look great because it's helmeted. Um, the Jaguarian head, who knows? Maybe that'll work. Uh, also, all those hands. So you get six hands, three sets of hands with the monk. We've got the closed fists that we saw the dwarf doing that little fighting stance. You got the closed fists. You've got the gripping hands, and then you've got the open hand. So, you know, I want to be able to have him, like, you know, holding the, the staff and having an open hand or both both fists. A cool variety there. Those different expressive hands are such a such an amazing addition to the line. It adds so much to it. The uh, other figure, the Blade Master, that comes with the gripping hands, and I believe the other hands are actually more that you can see actually here. You can see it's got that expressive hand, that, you know, that power hand. I always love those too. So that's what you get. All these different weapons with the Blade Master, two swords with scabbards, that big spear set um, with the monk. You get the monk staff and the nunchucks and, of course, his little dolly. And that leads to this photo. This was actually the first photo of the set that Trevor sent over and once again, just totally shows Trevor's expertise at work. Such an incredibly cool image that captures the spirit of these two characters wandering through the, the wilds of mythos, seeking adventure. I almost imagine these characters in my head as I was thinking about them. I imagine these characters being part of like a weekly television show, you know, like Kung Fu or something where every week they are encountering a new kind of villain of the week type format. I love, you know, monster of the week format, but they're encountering some monster and they have to protect some village from, you know, some kind of dastardly thing happening. Very much that like A team format. This is, this is the mythic legions, a team or the G team, the mythic legions, G team here. There we go. So that's the set in a nutshell. That's everything I wanted to talk about with this actual set. Um, obviously, I'm here for another 30 minutes. I'm going to go start looking through some of the comments to see if there are any more questions that I can answer. Okay. So if you do have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Of course, questions about this set, I'm happy to answer. Questions about Legions Con in general as well are going to be acceptable, and I will answer those. Uh, would samurai parts fit in the Legions line? Well, Japan doesn't exist in Mythos, but neither does Sparta, neither does you know Templar Knights and all. Real world armors and influences. I mean, something like the Red Shield Soldier is super based on historical gothic armor so all of those type of things can certainly influence mythic legions even if there is no japan in mythic legions we love looking at you know eric loves looking at historical armors and historical warriors and using elements of that where appropriate so while you may never see full-on samurai in mythic legions certainly there's a possibility a chance, you may say, that down the road we may see characters that have more of an influence based on those type of historical warriors. Billy Bay says, this is a two for pickup at Legion's Con for me. Billy, those are rookie numbers. We need to see more than that. I want to see that up. This is a very cool set, more than two. Actually, I'm just kidding. Two is awesome. Get what you, get what you want. Uh, as soon as I saw all the extras, I knew there was no way I could pass this up. Adding value to the Legions Con sets is something we try to do, but it's not exclusive to Legions Con. I mean, if you look at any of the figures, look at Thorassus, the First Risen, look at Sir Enoch, Sir Gideon. 
these are figures that are coming absolutely loaded with pieces and parts. Um, this is something that is across the entire Legion's line. We want you to look at these and say like, my goodness, there are a lot of parts here that I get for my dollars. And not just parts for the sake of having parts, because we all know that there are some lines, I dude, I love Mezco. I no bones about it, love Mezco Rumble Society. I can only use like 5% of the parts that come in those sets. I'm not upset that they include them because I oftentimes get more than one and use different parts. I love the variety of parts, but there are so many parts in there that you can't, you just can't use on that figure. There's certainly some of that in Legions as well. You know, there's what, three, four, five sets of hands in this. You're not going to use five sets of hands on these figures. Even, you know, yeah, you could use them on maybe a different figure, but they're color coded for these. Um, heads are usually a little bit easier to mix and match, but, you know, there's a sense of with any line and extra accessories, you can only use so many of them. We do try to include accessories that you can hopefully use on some of your other legions as well. Get one of those, you know, legion builders from reinforcements or whatever, and they're perfect to pop some of these extra heads on to create new characters. Uh, I need the dwarf head on the human scale monk body. I mean, the colors will totally work, obviously. You could do that. I mean, it's got a dwarfish look, but that's one of the cool things, I think, with a lot of the dwarves in Mythos. They, I mean, a dwarf almost in many ways looks like just a short barbarian. So a lot of the heads, you know, have been used. That original barbarian builder head was also used on a number of dwarves over the years. It looks great as a barbarian. It looks great as a dwarf. I always see Bromden as being more dwarfish, but it would absolutely work as a full-size figure if that's what you're going for. With all the new unique characters being introduced into the line, how will they fit into the overall story of Mythic Legions? They won't all fit perfectly into the story. There are some characters that are going to have little to no role at all. There are some characters, you know, when we write uh, a scene where, you know, if a knight comes into the room to, to tell Sir Gideon's, I, I know this for a fact, there's a scene where Sir Gideon's riding and a knight rides up to ask him a question and it's Sir Owain. Sir Owain is not a major character. He doesn't play a major role. But in that particular situation, I needed a character to ride up to Gideon to give him some information. Making it one of the named characters in the line makes a lot of sense. So there are many characters in the story that will have almost like cameo walk-on scenes, you may say, while there's a handful of characters that are really our main players that this is going to be focused on. Really no different than any other kind of story. In any other kind of story, there's the main players that the narrative centers on. And then there's other characters that maybe have an important scene. They're in a, you know, they're mentioned a few times. They have, you know, minor aspects. Mythic Legions is going to be the same way. Um, at the end of the day, we want to make cool toys. Not every cool toy we make, not every character we make is going to have a critical role in the story. Sometimes, though, we do create a cool character that we end up working deeper into the story because we really get into the character. We really end up liking it. Um, yeah, Albert saying, I'm going to give uh, Chris's figure, the Rising Suns, Yoshani carry swords for a more Chinese flair. Didn't have access to those. The the bladed spear, I forget the name of that weapon, but the spear and the swords that come with the Yoshani would be great here with this blade master. Those were ones that are certainly not far enough along in the process that we could consider them for this figure. So those had to not be included. Yeah, there's a lot of people that like the cat heads. So I got a comment here about the cat head being included. Um, a lot of people really like the cat heads. I really like the cat heads. So definitely cool to uh, include that. I know that that, just like the dwarf, there's, you know, the dwarf parts are going to appeal to that particular fan base. I know there's a number of people that really like the Jaguallians. So including that helps as well. Uh, did you, Noah, did you miss the part about the Gaspar Xavier body components? Um, probably all I just mentioned at the start was that those, they're new parts 
that are you know in our tooling library that were done as part of a previous way our previous process um you know things that we haven't fully you know released yet some of them were from early parts of the rising suns sculpting sessions which have already you know made it over um so it's a mixture of stuff the one thing i did show noah was i showed this photo here of the lower legs where it shows on the left is the lower leg we used none of these are brute legs those are 1.0 upper legs and they're two different 1.0 lower legs one which is thicker than the other the one that is on the left is the ones we used on gaspar those lower wraps are actually the wraps from tharnog the brute scale figure so they're actually a tiny bit too big like there's a little bit they, they don't fit as snug as they do on tharnog because tharnog's lower legs are a little bit bigger but they're close enough that they worked for this and i really wanted to have that fully wrapped lower leg as opposed to a bare lower leg uh red the mustang could we get neck peg packs in the future or parts like that there are really no plans to do just like parts of like random body pieces it's interesting you asked that because i had a conversation with someone about that today as well um you know, we do sell hands packs we do sell heads packs those genuinely can be used to enhance your current figures but they're also usually not the highest sellers um while customizers would love i'm sure limb packs and stuff like that the reality is they would appeal to such a small group of our fans that one of the things we have to think about is you know just doing a whole figure whether you're going to use that figure and pull it apart for components or whether you just want that figure there's more long-term value it's a lot easier for us to be able to introduce that to new fans so really that's kind of our focus there's no plans at this time at least to be a parts company and start selling actually like packs of parts or loose parts or anything like that really uh lower priced legion builders are probably the closest we'll get to something like that Ooh. yeah joel saying uh the legions con figure two packs the last couple of years have been great mix and match possible loadouts really highlight one of legion's biggest strengths in the lines totally intentional you know, we want, and I think obviously the Walter one was different because the Walter one, the the Furious Four in this set, the, the Gaspar Garich set, are very much cut from the same cloth. They were created in order to encourage mixing and matching and characters that go together. The Walter set was very much, we want to do a mythic and a cosmic version of these characters. And while you can swap some heads between the two of them that look cool, the body parts were not 100% meant to be swapped between the two of them. Um, but I love the fact that you you know, feel that about these sets because it's definitely something that we try to put in there. You know, I mentioned when we did the Furious 4 set, I wanted people to play. I wanted people to open these things, pop them apart, mix and match because it's one of my favorite things to do in the line. And I really do believe that more people that start playing with these and despite what Gaspar the Unamused likes to say, don't just put it on a shelf, actually play with their toys. I think that that will give them an additional appreciation for the Legion's lines. I love to encourage that. So these sets were certainly made with that spirit in mind. V-Dog, I cannot answer how many waves will be released before Legion's Con because that would be telling, so you'll just have to wait and see. I do give a lot of information on my show, but there are certain things that I do have to keep back. Gaspar skin tone matches what figure we already have. I do not know that answer. So if Joe Vasopolo is in the chat, he may be able to answer that a little bit better. Or Trevor 1-6 Shooter, he's been playing around with these and he has them in hand. He may be able to make a, a suggestion there as well. I have a number of comments to get through. They might have already answered that, and I haven't just gotten to that comment yet, so we'll keep going and we'll see. Going through all these comments here. Yes, they are the Abbott and Costello of Mythos. Or I imagine them more as the odd couple, Felix and Oscar. They're the Felix and Oscar of Mythos. Uh, 
Uh, yes, Alec. The nunchunks are two mace handles connected by a single chain. That was a funny when I said to George when I had said, "Hey, I want to uh, do nunchucks for this character." He was like, "Dude, we don't have nunchucks," and I was like, "No, we can. Like, literally, take the mace handle, connect the chain to another mace handle instead of to like the little you know spiked ball. It creates nunchucks." And and I've actually seen somebody. I've seen somebody else on the cabal do that exact exact same like um, connection with two mace handles. So certainly customizers have figured this out as well. But yeah, this was something that bill was something that quite some time ago I had put out there and said, yeah, we can do that. That'll be a lot of fun. And it's just a fun way to add a new weapon to the line using the parts that we already have kind of the garch's big bladed spear kind of falls under that category as well we don't have a look like that but it just uses existing parts how many of these two packs per case it's either 12 or 24. Um, are there any shipping services in or near legions con so, I mean, it is New Jersey. There's a lot of industrial stuff there. I am sure that there is a, uh, you know, like a FedEx or a UPS or something that's not too far by. Unfortunately, I don't believe there's a shipping service in the hotel. I, I know there's no shipping service in the hotel. So they don't actually have it. Some like convention centers will actually have like a UPS store in the convention center. This being a hotel, we don't have that there. When will the other exclusive be revealed? Probably next month. I think that's what we're doing. Um, it is done. It is done right now. So we've got a little bit of work that needs to be done on it from the photography side. Um, and then we got to plan when we're going to actually get that revealed. But I think right now we're probably looking at sometime in May. Mm, so uh, Billy Beige is actually commenting, saying uh, there's a post office between the hotel and the airport. He used it last year. Uh, yes, Hank, we did go over what parts are exclusive to Legion's Con. It is the dwarf legs and head on the monk and the Atlas head on the Blade Master. What made me think of nunchucks? I I had read somewhere, and it might have been D&D or whatever, about uh, monks not using bladed weapons. So I didn't want the monk to have a blue. So he's got a staff. So I wanted him to have another weapon that wasn't bladed. It was going to be a mace at one point, but just the idea of nunchucks, and I thought it was funny. So just adding something into the line like that, I thought that would be cute and funny. Mm -mm. Have there ever been any figures that were in development but not finished yet? Uh, well, I wouldn't say they were not finished. Um, I mean, there are figures that, have been finished for a while that didn't see the light of day for a while. The, the skeleton, the undead of Vikingfell figure, that's part of the retailer exclusive, the retailer appreciation wave that was finished years ago. Now, when we were getting it ready for the appreciation wave, we added to it, you know, the, the extra hands, the extra heads, a lot of that stuff was added after the fact recently um, but that's an example of a figure that we, and I mentioned this before, that we didn't have a spot for, for a little while. So it was finished and ready to go and just needed to find the right window to do so. So there's definitely figures like that. Um, there's certainly ideas that have been discussed, but are not finished. Let's say... Will these be the first lower bare leg parts we get in hand? Um, possibly. Could be. Mm. Why couldn't the Atlas skin tone match all the others? Um, honestly, because it didn't look... We talked about that dark skin, and it didn't look right on that head, so we wanted it to be different. I mean, we certainly could have, but it's something that we considered, and as we were looking at the different colors it looked a little bit too dark on that so we elected to do the a face color that we thought looked better on that head 
versus one that would work perfectly on the the monk body. Mm -hmm. The so Noah's asking, do we talk about the body on the Gaspar figure? Uh, yeah, so the body is, I mentioned, that's part of the sculpting sessions that were done for the Rising Suns wave, um, early, early parts of it. You know, just like last year, well, last year, for the Necronominus wave, Eric re-sculpted the knight in the skeleton bodies before he sculpted the characters. So before, like, he, he redid, he basically did the Valiant Knight before he did Gideon and Enoch and everybody. Um, Cause he knew he had to redo all those parts. So with the new barbarian parts with these new bear parts, he redid the barbarian build first before he said, okay, now I'm going to do Atlas and stuff like that. So he had a new build for the barbarians, but like at the first, first part of that sculpting session. So those are some of the parts that you're seeing here. More comments here. Just reading this. You're very welcome, Noah. Uh, so, Kerry, interesting question. A little off topic, but does anyone from your office ever visit factories? And if so, would there ever be a video showing how the figures are produced? Uh, yes. So, actually, these two guys that you see here, uh, Chris and George, they are headed to China next week along with one of the founders and owners of Full Horseman Studio, Jim Preziosi. They are all going over to our factories in China. We actually have a couple factories that we use. So we have, you know, a few factories that do tooling. We have a couple different factories that do production for us. Um, they're going to go over and visit all of those factories. They are going to be taking some content while they're over there. I don't think they're going to be doing any live streaming just because the nature of trying to get on a VPN and stuff over there. Um, but they are going to be taking videos. They are going to be taking photos. So our goal is to be able to bring some of that content to you in the coming months to give you more insight into kind of the behind the scenes workings of how these figures get created. Mm. Let's see. A lot of people answering that question for me. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yeah, so I mentioned, Greg, that the price hasn't been announced yet, but it's going to be very similar. I mean, it could be exactly like the other two. The other two that we did, the last two two-packs were $100 each. This will be right in that ballpark. Uh, Brendan's saying there's a FedEx store half a, down, half a mile down the road on Route 10. Uh, when will the intern lottery be announced? If you mean when will the winners be announced, we draw the names. So I think it ends on, was it the 12th? the 11th maybe april 11th that it ends let me look when that actually ends so the lottery is yes thursday april 11th is the last day to register so on the 12th we'll probably pull those names close the uh, registration and pull those names and then shortly after that uh we will email the winners who who were selected as part of that lottery and give them the opportunity to see if they do want to secure their spot. Road shark saying I'm bringing a large empty suitcase for allegiance con. Will that work? Or should I ship them home? Well, I mean, of course it depends on how many you're going to buy and whether you're going to keep them packaged. So um, Richard Jones from the, uh, your Allegiance podcast infamously has talked about doing exactly this, bringing an empty suitcase and just, I mean, filling it with Legion's figures, but he opened them all. They give a lot more room when you got packages. If you're going to actually open them and, you know, pack them in, you can get quite a few figures in to that suitcase. Um, I've also amazingly seen, people that go to like cons and come to our shows who bring like clothes that they don't want anymore because they put, they pack them for the way down, but they know they don't care about them. So they throw them away at the show. So they free up that space in their luggage for the way back, which is smart and insane at the same time. Um, let's see. 
out of this year's offerings released or not, do you have a favorite yet? Um, so no, no offense to Mr. Gorich, but Gaspar is my favorite. The, 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 the monk figure is very much what I wanted it to be. Every, every aspect of it. I love, I love the blade master figure. I love the, the items that you haven't seen yet. Um, but if I had to pick one, it would be the Gaspar figure. Joe Vasapolo answering a question from earlier saying the skin tone on these figures is close to Samir. So Samir from the Samir scroll water from the uh, Mythic Legion's Poxis wave. Mm. Going through all the comments as we get close. Uh, yep. Trevor reiterating that it's close to Samir. Is there room in the monk's robes or belts to stuff the toy? Not really. There are the side, you know, there are those little side uh, flaps. You could probably at least get like the feet through that flap. But if you wanted to get like the waist through and have it like right at the edge, it might be a little tight. Um, I know you can do the nunchucks through them because some of the photos that Trevor took, the nunchucks are hanging from those little belts, which is fun. Uh, <laughs> Curtis saying, man, I bet Jim traveling with George and Chris will be like a real life versions of plane trains and automobiles. While I do not wish that type of a travel experience on my friends, um, I also wouldn't mind hearing those stories. If you've never heard George tell stories there, he is a wonderfully funny storyteller, him telling him telling the story of traveling with Chris and uh, Jim is going to be funny regardless. So the more hijinks and chaos there is, the potentially funnier that story is going to be. So stay tuned. Uh, yeah, so Michael, brother Xavier over here saying, need to fully build out those characters with the included heads, then a bunch more to make a monastery of monks. And that's right where my head was at with this. Um, and of course, I should also reiterate that, you know, while I want you to come to Legion's Con and I want you to buy these Legion's Con figures because they help pay for Legion's Con. Legion's Con is incredibly expensive to put on. So these help fund the show. Um, but like all Four Horsemen show exclusive figures, there will be standard versions of these figures next year. So if you actually look, and I will go right now to... The website. So if you go to the Mythic Legion's website, we did add Gaspar the Unamused and Gorge the Unpredictable to the Mythic Legion's checklist. They're part of the convocation of Basilius, so they're they're in there as well. So if you click on these, you can actually see the photos. And there are two images that we haven't shown. I haven't shown today. Trevor also did accessory shots just for those figures. So this is what the standard version of Gaspar is going to come with. You can see it's got those hands. It's got the nunchucks in the staff, those two heads. For Gorich, the standard version of Gorich is going to come with these pieces here. Still has three heads, the armor, all of those bladed weapons, and those two sets of hands. So to your point, uh, you, you know, Brother Xavier, uh, yeah, whether you buy multiple Legions concepts or whether you wait for the standard release sometime in 2025, I loved the idea of getting a number of these Gaspar figures, building them out. There's three different builds that you can do right in this set to have three members of this monastery of monks. And I cannot wait to see what customizers are going to do. You know, that's one of the great things about this by changing up the look of the robes, using them, you know, not using them, you know, adding, you know, different parts to be more of a cape or something. You can do a lot of cool things within this figure, just adding different heads to build out members of this, this monastery. So I love that idea. I'm I'm right there as well. As I said, I have a number of custom monk characters for a little group that I called the Order of the Stone Lotus. That was 
my head cannon when I created those customs years ago. So the idea of a number of different monks together, I'm totally on board with that. Totally on board. Going through the comments here. So uh, Trevor reiterating, saying the nunchucks do fit in the belt, but they are tight. Try at your own risk. Andy saying, thank you, Jeremy, for the in-depth look at these. Thank you. And thank you for all of your comments tonight, all of your questions. And thank you so much for all of your enthusiasm, not only for this figure set, but for Legion's Con as a whole. Uh, you know, what we were able to do today and, you know, I what I was able to do today, you know, don't, none of this is in a vacuum. I say this all the time, but it bears repeating. This is such a team effort. Wow. I'm so fortunate that I get to, you know, a lot of times be the presenter and be the face of some of these reveals. And in this particular case, yeah, I came up with the idea and wrote these bios, but everything that you see that comes out of the studio is such an incredible team effort. You know, these figures are made so much better by the contributions of everybody, including George and Chris. So being able to present these to them, surprise them the way that we were able to do this afternoon was an absolute joy. Um, something, I, this is the third year in a row I've gotten to do this. We got to surprise the My Wife is Gonna Kill Me crew in 2022, where similar to George today, they, they genuinely thought it was a gag. They thought it was a joke. They were like, no, these these aren't the real names, are they? Um, George and Chris were like that as well today. I got to do it last year with Walter where, you know, the whole crew of us presented it to Walter on the 4 o'clock show. And, you know, he got very emotional about it. So all of this type of stuff, being able to be part of this company in this community is incredibly special. And today is one of those days that is more special than most. So thank you to everyone for your comments. Thank you for hanging out with me this evening. Yes, Kurt is saying, all you podcast YouTube hosts, you're going to want to grab a lot of these for giveaways. So we will have them at Legion's Con. Um, the last few years at Legion's Con, we have not sold out of product there. We've had more than enough for everybody. Of course, there's going to be a year that you know, we're going to underestimate what the demand for something is and they're going to sell out. Will it be this year? Have to wait and see. Um, I always say to people, if you buy badges to Legion's Con, you are not guaranteed the figures, especially because we don't, if you buy them, if you buy a badge and can't make it to Legion's Con, you can't contact us and say, hey, I wasn't able to make it. Can you ship me a set? That's that's unfortunately not how we are able to do it. We simply don't have the resources to do that. So if you come to Legion's Con, you have a very good chance at being able to get these. And I only say very good chance because I don't want to say you're guaranteed. I never like to say you're guaranteed something. Um, but if you've been the last few years, there were plenty to go around. Even so that we limited the sets the last few years to two per person. Um, and then once we got through the line, we lifted all those limits. So anybody who I've seen a number of people already asking, hey, I can't go to Legion's Con this year. Can somebody pick me up one? As long as we're able to meet the demand of the people that are actually in the room, we never have a problem lifting those limits. If the stock is there, which it has been in previous years, lifting those limits so you can buy some extras to hook people up on the cabal. That's one of the things I love is that, you know, we always hear about toy scalpers and everything. And yeah, there's always some of that. But the amount of people that will pick stuff up at Legion's Con for members of the cabal, members of the community and sell it to them at, you know, pretty much cost. Um, by the way, just my little kind of uh, advice. If someone does pick you up a Legion's Con figure and sells it to you at cost, throw them a few extra bucks because they are going to wait in a line to get them. They are going to do the work. They did pay for their badges. So throw them a little bit of extra bucks that is going to uh, allow them to you know make it worth their while. Even if they don't ask for it, I always like to tell people that's, that's always appreciated for those that do play Mule. So 
Very cool. Legion's Con day one figure set. Gaspar the Unamused. Gorich the Unpredictable. Going through the comments one last time. <laughs> Joe saying Chris's stories are 25% or half words, 25% failing and flailing and 25% giggling. I think you might be a little light on the giggling percentage there, but fair enough. So very cool. Thank you all very much. With that, I'm going to say good night. I will see you back here next week. Um, I will be honest, it's not going to be as exciting a show. We're not going to have as cool stuff to talk about, or will we? Who knows? Remember I said that the first quarter of the year was kind of closing out 2023. You know, a lot of stuff was expected. Here we are. Q2 has just started, and we're already seeing some surprise reveals. Buckle up, everybody, because this is going to be an absolutely amazing year of reveals and mysteries. Stay tuned. Thank you.